Hello Year 9 and welcome to your online um, lesson for when you are absent at school. Um, so the first topic we're going to be discussing is pitch notation. Uh, let's just get straight into it. Um, so the start activity. Can you name any of the notes from the music below? So on a Word document or a Google Docs file, tell me how many you can name. Don't worry if you can't name any at all. We're going to recap this. It's been a year or sometimes two years uh, if you learn this in year seven since you know since we've covered it so don't panic now i'm just going to demonstrate how to open up a document to do this on now i recommend that you use google docs okay so i'm going to demonstrate how to do that so um what you'll have open is you'll have a youtube video because that's where you're watching this and I've got a YouTube tab open just to show you what to do. So you're going to go to your Google Classroom. Obviously, my page looks a little bit different to yours, being a teacher. And you're going to click the nine dots in the top right-hand corner. So when you click on those, you have a few options. And I'd like you to choose the Docs um, option. I think this is the easiest way to submit your work. So if you click on that, what happens is it opens up a, this page. And you just want to click black. Okay. And once it opens, you can click your star activity. Type in star activity. Okay, so I know what you're doing. And then you can tell me, and please do write in a sentence, okay, because it does improve your literacy if you constantly practice writing in a sentence. Um, I knew however many notes from the music on the starter activity. Yeah. So, don't worry if you don't know any, okay, pause the video, have a look at the screen, and tell me how many notes that you can remember. So pause the video now and go and do that. Okay, good. So you've done that. Um, and like I said, don't worry if you don't know any, it's not a problem because we're going to go over it again. Okay. You know, sometimes things don't stick in the first time. So here we go. Recap of pitch notation. Let's just talk about this symbol to start with. That there is the treble clef. Okay. The treble clef tells us that it's high in pitch. Okay. It's not low. Okay. Because that would use a different, a different symbol here. Okay. So that there, actually, if we're playing piano, that tells us that we're playing the notes in our right hand. Okay. Nine times out of ten. That's what that means, okay? And if we have a look at some of these um, these notes here, we must remember that the musical alphabet stops at G, okay? So once I go A, B, C, D, E, F, okay, I go to G, what happens is it repeats and goes back to A, all right? There is no H note, okay? So there's only seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay? Those are all the notes, okay? But we're gonna look at how we change those notes a little bit further on. So going up the stave, the notes follow the alphabetical order. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, we're just following the alphabet when we go up the stave. Okay, that might start on an E in this case, but it doesn't matter, it's still going up the alphabet. E, F, G. Okay, then we go back to A because there's no H. Okay, remember that. Um, so we go back to A, B, C, D, E, F and continue. Okay, so if we did put an extra note above F, this note here would be G if it was sat on top of the stair. And just likewise, going backwards, it obviously goes backwards. If I'm going down the stair, it goes backwards through the alphabet. So if I'm going down, I've got F, E, D, C, B, A, and then there's no H note, okay? And once we get to A, we go back to G, F, and E, okay? So it goes backwards, okay? Now, I may have taught you some mnemonics used to remember those notes. So, for example, one of the mnemonics might be here, every good boy deserves football. That tells us the notes that are on the line. So the notes on the line um, are the ones that actually have the line going through it. OK, so when we say notes on the line, it kind of it doesn't mean because it can get confusing because this note here is, is technically sat on top of the line, but it's in between two lines. OK, and we call that a space. Whereas this note over here, that's got a line going through it. So we actually call that one, that's the one that's on the line, okay? And the notes on the line are E, G, B, D, and F, okay? And the mnemonic, to remember that, is every good boy deserves football. A mnemonic is a phrase that we use to remember um, something that we need to learn. So 
in science, you might have learned the order of the rainbow and the colours that are in that order. And you'll have used the phrase Richard of York gave battle in vain. And Richard is red, of is orange, yellow um, is York. OK, so that helps you to remember the order of those colours. Now, this is exactly the same, but it tells us the order of the notes. All right, so every good boy deserves football is the mnemonic to learn the notes on the line when we look at a treble clef. Um, the notes in the spaces, they spell out the word face. So that's easily enough remembered. It even rhymes, face, space, rhymes. So try and remember that. But p please take note that F is at the lower end. OK, we're not starting F at the top and spelling face going down. It actually spells face going up. OK, so that is the one thing to try and remember when you remember face in the space. OK, so what happens when you go above the notes, uh, above the staff? OK, so the staff is these five lines that we're working on. OK, you see these one, two, three, four, five. Those lines are called the staff. And sometimes notes are higher than the staff will allow. OK, and this is when we use ledger lines. OK, so. I'm going to bring you to a lesson now you can use this link to get yourself to um, the lesson but you can also just watch this video because I'm going to explain it using that link so if I just click here this is where that link takes us okay and it tells us a lot about it tells us everything I'm going to teach you to be honest so the staff is those five lines and um, just move this on the modern staff it compri comprises of five lines four spaces okay and every line or space corresponds to a key on the keyboard or a note on the guitar or cello or violin any of those it still counts okay and um, the clefs tell us what range we're playing in so the clef on the left the treble clef which we've just been looking at that tells us it's high ranged this is the bass clef which tells us it's lower in pitch okay so the lower instruments for example a cello is lower than a violin a violin's music would be written using the treble clef. A cello's music would be written using the bass clef, okay? And the way to remember those two, okay, is think about Megan Trainer. She wrote a song called All About That Bass, about that bass, no treble, okay? And she's using this as a metaphor to discuss um, body image, and that's what she is talking about. So. Remember that, remember the song, all about that bass, about that bass, no treble, and you should be able to remember what those clefs are called, okay? So, here we go, treble and bass clef. This takes us through what I've just talked about, the alphabet, it goes up, because this clef is sometimes called the G clef, but I don't want to talk about that because it'll confuse you. You stick to these, okay? Every good boy deserves football in face. I think that's a better way to try and remember those notes okay so here we don't even have every at the bottom but every good boy deserves football and we don't have the f to spell f a c e but those other notes are there so it says here uh oh we've just run out of room to place notes what happens now this bit here so it tells us ledger lines will solve our problem so there it comes in it's an extra line just drawn there where we put a note, okay? So when we place the note in there, that helps us complete this A to A um, scale, okay? And we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, okay? Go back to A. So it just continues going up. So there'll be a ledger line here with a line going across and the note sat on top. That will be B. If there's two ledger lines with the note going through the second line, that'll be C, okay? So with that in mind, we're going to start our first task, okay? Let's get through that. I've just talk about that. Sorry, I've made a mistake. We're going to talk about accidentals before we start our task. Accidentals are those sharp and flat signs you see on the right, okay? So accidental notes are notes that have been sharpened or flattened. Um, these are the black keys on the keyboard, okay? So all the white keys are not sharp. They are not flat. All the white keys are just A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But the black notes in between, they are sharps and flats, okay? So when you raise the pitch of a note, you make it sharp. When you lower the pitch of a note, you make it flat, okay? I'm going to demonstrate that a little bit with the task that I'm going to ask you to do. So the pitch activity, what I want you to do is go back to your Google Classroom, and where you found the link for this video, there'll be another link underneath that is 
uh, takes you to musictheory.net. Okay, do that now. Okay, and then return to the video um, where I will show you how to set up the task. Okay, so go open up musictheory.net and then pause the video and come back when you've done that. Okay, so you've opened up musictheory.net. What your screen will look like, if I just open it up, I've obviously kept that open. Remember, you can go to that lessons page at any point, okay? You can use that to go to this staff, class and ledger lines, and that'll teach you everything that I'm teaching you anyway. But the task itself, you need to click on exercises, and you need to go to staff at note identification, which is in this staff identification part here. So click on that. And what I want you to do is click on settings. First of all, I've played this already, so I need to reset the oh, not sure time, I don't want a timer, high timer. Uh, reset the score, okay? So it's a zero, zero. But just make sure yours is the same. It should be if it's the first time you've opened this up. We're then going to click on settings, okay? And I've got my settings set up. So basically, in clefs, just make sure you've only got the treble clef selected and that your range is what it should be. Okay, I've altered mine since the last time um, I used it. Um, and your range should be between two ledger lines at the bottom and two ledger lines at the top. So just make sure your screen, your range looks like mine. Okay, you will also need to turn this button on. This is accidentals, those are those sharps and flats, okay? And once you've done that, once you click, once all those things are selected, okay, keep everything else the same. So just accidentals, treble clef, Okay, just the one clef and those ledger lines. Okay, you're gonna click off the task, okay? So there's our first question, okay? Now, I know it's every good boy deserves football. So I know this top line here is F, okay? If I go one above F, it'll be G, right? But G would be in the gap below this note, right? After G, we have the note A, okay? Because remember, once we hit G, we go back to A, right? And then it's got this symbol here. Now, if you go back to your PowerPoint, you'll know that symbol is a flat sign. OK, so let's click on that. So we said it was A and it's flat. So the answer there is A flat. OK, if I can click on it. There we go. The next one is just one above, actually. It's going to be completely random for you, so you won't get the same questions. And if that one was A, if I just go up the alphabet to the next one above, that one there is B. OK, so just to work that out, remember the top line was F. The one in the gap here would be G, on this line is A, and the one above that is B. And it's got this symbol again, this B symbol, and that is a flat, okay? It's even got it on this the one I have to select. So that one there is B flat, okay? And back now, this is on the top of the staff. It's sat on top. So remember, this note here is F, okay? The one that's sat on the line is one above F. So go up the alphabet, and after F comes G. Okay, there's G, but it's got this flat sign above it, G flat. That is the task I want you to do. Okay, I want you to do 20 of these. Okay, and when you are finished, I want you to press the control button and the print screen button. So when you are finished doing 20 of these, okay, you're going to press the control and the print screen button. Okay, you press them at the same time, and that takes a screenshot of your screen. Okay, and you're going to paste that picture into the Word document or the Google Docs file, okay? So if I just demonstrate that, we've got our document here, all right? I'm, I've only done three, you're gonna do 20. That's it. Press Control, press the Print Screen button. So Control will be in the bottom left of your keyboard. Print Screen will be above Delete or above Backspace, depending on the keyboard you've got. It'll be somewhere around there. And then you're gonna to go to your Untitled Document, okay? And you're gonna paste that in, okay? You can do it this way, Edit, Paste. OK, and then that picture comes up so I can see what your score was. If you want to keep doing it until you get 100 percent, OK, to get 20 out of 20 and 100 percent, what you'll need to do is every time you get one wrong, you will have to reset the score by pressing these three dots. OK, so if you need if you want to do that, you can do that. If you are unsure of anything, just rewind the video and listen again to the task and it should explain it. If you've got any other questions, please put them in the comments. On your Google Classroom assignments, okay. So if you had an assignment open, um, you'll be able to I've just click on this class at random, okay. If you've got something open, right, you'll be able to write a comment, and you just saw that class comment, okay. You can ask me a question in there, okay. So just a reminder, 
you do that task now you want to complete 20 of them pause the video when you're finished come back and remember to paste that print screen that screenshot into your document okay so pause the video go and do your 20 questions on that exercise and then come back okay welcome back i hope you feel confident remember you can do that as many times as you like just keep resetting the score and get the score that you want okay we're now going to look at the base clef now the base clef is something that you might have looked at in year eight okay it's for instruments with a lower pitch range it's for singers who've got a deep voice so bass singers and it's also for the instruments like the cello instruments like the bass guitar and things like that and um, please note the notes are different okay they are look that bottom is no longer e it's not every good boy deserves football anymore we need to learn some new mnemonics to know where the notes are on the bass clef okay so here's one that i came up with it is ghostbusters drive fast always so the first note on the line is g ghostbusters is the second line b d drive is the middle line f fast is the fourth line from the bottom and a is the top line always okay so ghostbusters drive fast always that's how i remember the notes on the bass clef and the notes in the spaces okay no longer spell face they now sit now we use the mnemonic all cows eat grass okay so all cows eat grass a c e g and those are the notes in the spaces now remember you only need to know where one of those notes are so if you just remember when you get to the bass clef that g is the bottom line okay you can actually work out well after g we go back to a b c d on the line e in the space f on the line g in the space a okay so it always alternates space line space line okay so if you're unsure about any of this remember you can rewind the video and um watch it again and again until you are confident you can make notes on paper if that's what you need to do uh, you can even take pictures of these screens um on your phone to help you with the exercise that's coming up now the exercise coming up is very very similar to the last one okay so like activity one go back to your google classroom assignment where you found the link for this video click on that music theory link you might still have it open okay if you still got it open that's absolutely fine okay so if you still got it open what you need to do is reset the score okay then we're going to click the settings button okay and we're going to add the bass clef in so once you've added the bass clef in so remember i'll just do that again you click on the clefs and you add the bass clef in here okay once you've done that everything else is fine except my bass range is not where it should be yours probably will be if you've never been on the website before but i was demonstrating this with some younger year groups and we don't do ledger lines with the younger year groups so um there we go now those ranges are the same i've still got accidentals turned on because that's important in year nine we should know the sharps and the flats so i've customized this now to exactly how i want it and i'm going to press this uh settings button it's straight away reset my score and it's given me a new question so here's the bass clef now the bottom line was g okay you can remember this by two ways you could go ghost next line busters next line drive next line fast last line always okay so i know this top line's an a or you could just go g because you know ghost is there and then just go g a in the space b on the line c in the space d on the line e in the space f on the line g in the space and a back on the line so that's what this top line is it is a okay and then i can just try and work it out from there so after a in this gap here would be b on this line it's c in this gap we've got d and on this line after d we've got e and it's got a sharp next to it okay so this one will be e sharp okay and it comes up correct now look the clef has changed all right so now i need to go back to the way i was thinking right this is every good boy deserves football okay every good boy deserves football so that top line is an f it's got a sharp in front of it so that note is f sharp okay and here we are we're still on the treble clef the bottom line e every okay so that's just an e okay once again you're going to do 20 of these when you are finished you're going to press Control, print screen like you did last time okay and paste this underneath the first activity okay so you should have two scores now yours should definitely be 20s 
okay and don't worry about get 20 out of 20 okay you can but if you do want to get 20 out of 20 just click the three dots and click reset score okay and then it resets it if you really really want to go for 20 out of 20 but don't worry this is just practice of learning it but if you are unsure I do recommend going through it and trying to get it right so if, if you're unsure and you're getting quite a few wrong and you're on 50 percent or less don't just stop at 20 keep practicing get it right okay because learning music and learning to read music is well learning to read music makes learning piano or guitar or anything so much easier okay so there's pitch activity two so pause the video complete that and take a screenshot of it and paste it into your google docs file when you're finished, come back to the video. Okay, so well done. You've completed both the activities for today. Um, they are much more complicated than what we teach in year seven and year eight. So don't worry if you found it difficult. But if you do have any questions at all, please just put a question in the comments. If Miss Parker teaches you, Miss Parker will answer the question for you. If I'm your teacher, I will answer that question. So please, please, please ask. All right, don't just leave it, we can help you. All right, so the plenary. Underneath your screenshots on your Google Docs file, tell me as many reasons as you can think as to why it is important to learn where the notes are on sheet music. I've given you an example. I want you, you can use my example, but I want you to write more reasons, okay? Because it's tell me as many reasons as you can, not just take Mr. Coomer's reason and leave that, okay? Use as many as you can. So here's my example. I think learning pitch notation is important because I then know which keyboard keys to press and play the right tune, okay? That is one reason. Can you come up with more, right? Have a think about it, right? How else? Um, what else is that gonna help with learning where the notes are, all right? It helps with keyboard. Does it help with other instruments, okay? It helps with the tune. Can it help with more than just the tune? Can you think of another word for maybe when you play three notes at once? What's that called? Okay, because it's not called a note when you play three of them. Okay, have a think and answer underneath your screenshots. And that's great. And once you've done that, you have completed the lesson. I'm now going to show you how to submit it. So pause the video, do the plenary, come back, and I'm going to show you how to submit that work. Okay, so you've finished today's lesson. You will just now need to submit your work. So submitting the work, you're going to go to Google Classroom and the assignment you are working on. If you can't find it, click Classwork at the top and find it that way. You may need to click on the title. And then, so in this case, the title is Pitch Notation. And then click View Assignment. So that will come underneath the description. Um, once you click view assignment on the right hand side, there'll be a box that says add or create. OK, you need to click that. And if you've worked on Google Documents, it should be the first thing that appears that your work that you've done today. If you've done it on Microsoft Word, you're going to have to upload it from your computer to Google Classroom um, and you'll have to find that yourself. So that's why I've advised using Google Docs because Google Docs will just be there straight away for you. OK, once you've added it, OK, I think you click upload. Um, and then what the, the last thing you do is click turn in. OK, I'll turn it in. It might say I'm not, I'm not 100 percent. All right. Once you've done that, it submits. All right. That tells me or Miss Barker that you've done the work. OK, um, so thank you very much for completing that. Um, and just to give you a little bit of extra, if you want to use this website by, you know, this music theory net, it literally teaches you everything theory wise you need to know about music so you can click lessons all right it'll teach you everything you want okay um and please feel free to research any of this at home and then come back in you can ask miss hacker or you can ask myself about the questions that you've got about this this is a fantastic tool for learning music theory okay so Thank you for completing the lesson. Um, I hope to see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your week as best you can while you're sat at home. Um, and enjoy your weekends. And I just can't wait to see you when you come back. Okay. Thank you very much.